Vaishva naram yati bahaya shagataha Vaishva naram yati vyasaya gataha Shushunaya brahma patena so shi cha cha Shushunaya brahma patena so shi cha Shushunaya brahma patena so shi cha Sushunaya Brahma Patena Shochisha Viduta Kalko Taharir Uta Stat Viduta Kalko Taharir Uta Stat Viduta Kalko Taharir Udastat Viduta Kalko Taharir Udastat Viduta Kalko Taharir Udastat Rayati Chakram Nirpa Shai Shumaram Rayati Chakram Nirpa Shai Shumaram Rayati Chakram Nirpa Shashumaram Rayati Chakram Nirpa Shashumaram Rayati Chakram Nirpa Shashumaram Rayati Chakram Nirpa Shashumaram Vaishvanaram Vaishnavan Vaishvanaram Oh, excuse me, I didn't do the first line. Vaishvanaram yati vihaya sakata Vaishvanaram yati vihaya sakata Susumanaya brahma patena sochita sa Susumanaya brahma patena sochita sa Vituta kalkota hare utashtat Vituta kalkota hare utashtat Prayati Chakram Nirpa Sai Shumaram Prayati Chakram Nirpa Sai Shumaram Vaishvanaram Yati Vihaya Sagataha Vaishvanaram Yati Vihaya Sagataha Shishumnaya Brahma Patena Sochisha Shishumanaya Brahma Patena Sochisha Viduta Kalkota Hare Udastat Viduta Kalkota Hare Udastat Prayati Chakram Nipa Shai Shumaram Prayati Chakram Nipa Shai Shumaram Vishishtanaram Yati Vihaya Sagata Prayati Chakram Nirpasasumaram 
their movements are unrestricted within the within and beyond the material worlds. The fruit of workers, the gross materialists, can never move in such an unrestricted manner. So uh, one may wonder how is it possible that we can even understand what's going on. Uh, this is proof that if anybody wants to dwell into the Vedic literature, the science is complete. It's completely advanced. And it's pretty much beyond this. But, but if we apply ourselves, we can understand. Uh, just like when the soul comes to a uh, king, okay, when such a mystic passes over the Milky Way by the illuminating Susumna to reach the highest planet Brahma Loka, he must go first to Vaishnavara, the planet of the deity of fire. This reminds me of, oh, sorry. I don't know if, if you all probably know a little bit about the uh, like a clean room, you know, like an electronics and things like that. When you have to be, you go, you go, you walk in an outer area, outer room, and what happens is you, you put a clean covering over, and you have to wear booties, and you have to wear a hairnet, and then you walk into a cleaning chamber, and it blows all the loose particles off you like that, like it's purifying, you know. Hmm. And then you walk into the clean room where they have all the electronic equipment. Maybe they've got chips, they're manufacturing, whatever, you know, electronic chips. So that reminded me uh, a little bit like that. First must be clean of the deity of fire, wherein he becomes completely cleansed of all contaminations, and thereafter he still goes higher to the circle of Shishumara to relate with Lord Hadi, the personality of Godhead. So, there's a, there's a process for everything. One may say, well, I can't even see with that. Well, what are you talking about, you know? I mean, we're, we're in the middle of the planetary system. And it's pretty fascinating here, you know, the things you see. I mean, every day the sun comes up, the birds are chirping, everyone gets his food, every ant, every, every elephant, uh, every human being, uh, every demigod, you know, everyone gets their a lot of food. The Lord's feeding everyone which is pretty much inconceivable in itself. And then we look around and we see all the variegatedness of material energy, and this is just the middle planetary system. And then, of course, uh, one can go further higher to, for instance, Brahma Loka, it's inconceivable. It's inconceivable. But like you say, there is a process, though. Um, process of purification. I was just looking here before we started class and the Bhagavatam was open to a Shudeva Goswami speaking to Maharaj Krikshit and then I was looking at the front cover right next to it, a Krishna instructing Arjuna and then I looked to my right and I see our spiritual master. So in all three cases it was, you know, you see instructing going on, you know, from the previous Acharyas you know, passing down knowledge. And then Krishna, of course, is the original uh, spiritual master, speak to Arjuna. And uh, I'd like to speak a little bit today about uh, Srila Prabhupada. process that they're talking about, it may be complicated, I'm not sure, but what we're concerned with is bhakti yoga, you know, and we're very fortunate to have a bona fide spiritual master. So for us, uh, Prabhupada's made it very, very easy. I just want to read a little bit about Shri Prabhupada. In the past 12 years, in spite of his advanced age, you know, Shri Prabhupada circled the globe 14 times on lecture tours that took him to six continents. In spite of such a vigorous schedule, Shri Prabhupada continued to write prolifically. 
His writings constitute a veritable library in Vedic philosophy, religion, literature, and culture. Moreover, the activities of Srila Prabhupada have been predicted in the ancient scriptures of India. The following is from the Brahma by Varta Purana. Quote, Speaking on behalf of all the sacred rivers, Jamuna, Gandharvi, Gandhavari, Sarasvati, Narmada, Sindhu, Kaveri, etc., Ganga Devi said, O oh Lord, Lord Krishna, we can see that your pastimes are about to end, and people are becoming more and more materialistic. You have been very merciful to us. After you leave, however, all the simple people in, in Kali will take bath in our waters, and we will become overwhelmed with simple reactions. Lord Krishna, and I don't know if you noticed this, but I was talking to Phil about this last night, but so many times, Lord Krishna, whenever he replies, it seems like he's always smiling. And I was trying to explain to Phil that Krishna is not affected by emotional material nature. He's always in bliss, ecstatic bliss, you know, beyond our understanding. Lord Krishna smiled and replied to Ganga Devi, Be patient. After 5,000 years, my mantra, Upasaka, worshiper of the holy name, will appear in this world and spread the chanting of the holy names everywhere. Not only in India, but all over the world, people will chant, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. By this chanting, the whole world will become Eka Varna, one class. One designation, namely Hari Bhaktas, devotees of the Supreme Lord Vishnu Krishna. Because the devotees of Hari are so pure, anyone who contacts them will become purified from sinful reactions. These pure devotees will visit India and purify you of sinful reactions by bathing in your sacred waters. This period of worldwide chanting of Hare Krishna will continue for 10,000 years. After that, the devotees will see the full force of Kali Yuga overtaking the world. At that time, all the sacred rivers should hide underneath the earth like Saraswati has already done and wait for the next Satya Yuga. In the Sri Chaitanya Mangala, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has said, I want to flood the whole world with the chanting of the holy names. I will personally preach and flood India with Hari Nama Sankirtan. My Sena Bhakti Bhakta Commander-in-Chief will come, preach in distant countries, and flood the world with the chanting of Hare Krishna. Narayana, the great Mahajan, religious authority, foretold Srila Prabhupada's extraordinary worldwide preaching in the Padma Purana, Bhagavad Mahatmya. O oh, Bhakti Devi, this is Narayana speaking, O oh, Bhakti Devi, O oh, beautiful face one, there is no other age like Kali Yuga, because you will be established in every house as well as in the heart of every person. Hear my vow, if I do not preach your message, subdue all other religions, and make devotional festivals prominent, then I shall not be considered the servant of Lord Hari and Kali Yuga. Those people who follow you, even if they are sinful, will attain the abode of Lord Krishna without doubt. That's not only speaking to Bhakti Devi, Bhakti Devi. Unlike anyone else, Srila Prabhupada fulfilled the prediction of Lord Chaitanya that is mentioned in the Sri Chaitanya Bhagavad. In every town and village in the world, my name will be heard. In the 1800s, Thakur Bhakti Vinod published an article entitled Nainanda Shuryodaya in his magazine Sanjana Toshani, wherein he states, Soon there will be a time when the chanting of Krishna's name will be heard in England, France, Russia, Germany, and America. From these passages, one can clearly see that Sri Krishna and his empowered devotees have precisely predicted the phenomenal preaching success of Srila Prabhupada, just as Srila Prabhupada's glorious activities were foretold and practically seen. His appearance and disappearance were also glorious. Srila Prabhupada appeared on Nandotsava, a day happily celebrated by millions of pious Indians every year. 
Nandotsava means Nanda Maharaja's birth festival for Krishna. 5,000 years ago, Lord Krishna appeared in Vrindavan at midnight at Anjan Mastami when all the Vijabhasis, Rajabhasis were sleeping. The next day, which became known as Nandotsava, Nanda Maharaj dressed in luxuriant garments and held a huge festival to honor the auspicious appearance of his divine son. Overwhelmed with ecstasy, Nanda Maharaj distributed profuse charity to everyone in his kingdom. He gave away opulent cloth, ornaments, and two million richly decorated cows to the Brahmins, intellectual members of the first social division in Vedic society. Nanda Maharaj satisfied everyone's desires with his abundant gifts. The atmosphere of Rajabhumi Vrindavan was alive with the vibration of auspicious Vedic hymns. Everything was lavishly decorated to create happiness. Bursting with bliss, the Rajabhasis expressed their joy by throwing butter, yogurt, and ghee all around and on each, and on each other. In Vrindavan and all over India, Nandotsava is still joyously celebrated. Just over 100 years ago, on this most auspicious spiritual occasion, His Divine Grace, Srila Prabhupada, appeared in this world to fulfill the mission of the Supreme Lord. Srila Prabhupada appeared amidst an atmosphere surcharged with thoughts of Krishna. He grew up as a pure devotee of Lord Krishna and distributed Krishna consciousness all over the world. After fulfilling all the divine predictions mentioned above, Prabhupada came to Vrindavan to leave his body during Kartik, November, October and November. November 14, 1977, 7.20 p.m. At that time in the heavens, the constellations were united to form Amrita Yoga, which is the most auspicious time to embark on a journey. It also indicates the successful completion of an endeavor. While surrounded by loving disciples, singing their hearts out in kirtan, Sri Prabhupada chanted Hare Krishna and entered the pastimes of Sri Sri Radha Govinda. Sri Prabhupada, a perfect appearance, a perfect life, and a perfect disappearance. Sri Prabhupada said Vrindavan was his home, and Mayapur, Sri Navadri Dham, was where he worshipped Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Srila Prabhupada lives forever in his books, worshipping Lord Chaitanya, by teaching everyone to serve Sri Krishna and always chant Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Has everyone seen how beautiful Gaga Devi is? Yeah. <laughs> You know, I think it's interesting you mentioned that um, Krishna told, uh, is it Ganga, that all the sacred rivers during the Kali, like Saraswati, will go under, underground. And I've often, you know, speculated on this philosophically, uh, trans hopefully transcendentally. But Prabhupada named the Atlanta Temple New Panahati. And Panahati is on the bank of the Ganges. Now, it's, we didn't know at the time when he gave us that name. Um, why, and we, uh, I was always wondering why, why Panahati? Because it's, there's no river. And it turns out there's an underground river where that park is in front of the temple. And that river, that underground river, back in the at the turn of the 20th century, you know, late 1800s, 1900s, about a mile or two towards the main city, around where there's a big, used to be the Sears building, there's a spring. Then it's not, it's not um, visible anymore, but that's where everybody would go to get this medicinal water. It cured all, you know, stomach ailments and other, um, it was considered very pure and healthy water. So when I hear how this quote, where Krishna is saying that sacred rivers will go underground, I, I, I often wonder if some kind of a branch of the sacred river is not there in front of the Atlanta Temple. Mm -hmm. Possible. 
You know, you're saying that 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 string of parks in front of the Atlanta Temple is right. It's actually above an underground river. river. That's right. And this, they say how wide it was or anything. No. But you know that reminds me of my Sevica farm also because uh, you know it's in the shape of a tosi leaf and the main stem is where the underground stream, the spring where they get the water. You can see it, you can look in the opening and see it flowing down there, you know. Yeah, well, it used to be flowing through the, the farm all the time. That there was a creek all the time flowing through it. Then the Duck River Electric did something upriver. Okay. And then it was cut off. Wow. Yeah. I didn't ever know that. Yeah. But you can still see it. Well, you, I guess you've seen it look underground and you can see it flowing. I didn't see that, no. Okay. I've seen it above ground, though. Not the whole, what you're talking about, but I used to be a constant... You have it's, seen it above ground? Right? Yeah, I mean, it, it, along the, that road, there was always a creek most of the year. My son is sometimes during the winter time, oh, I'll catch okay. him in the creek with his winter clothes on, laying in the creek, because he said, a Vaishnava, when he sees water, must go swimming. This is, it's like, you know, 20 degrees outside, he's got his winter clothes on, and he's lying in this creek along the road. 20 degrees? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Wow. That's your son, you said? Yeah. That was years ago, wasn't it? Yeah, he was, a, he, he, he was, he was probably about three or four years old. Or he's he's going to be 42 later this year. Do the math. Sure, the prophet says, uh, Real love cannot be experienced in this material world. All material relationships have got motive. We have to invoke our love for Krishna. Then you will be satisfied. Otherwise, you will be frustrated. That is going on. One may admit or not admit that that frustration is going on. First qualification of a demon is that he does not know what is to be done, what is not to be done. He does not know what is right and what is wrong. Therefore, when a student first comes to us, we do this and don't do that. The physician will say, do this and don't do that. The asuras, because they don't like to take lessons from superiors, they can cop their own lessons. Robert says the right name is Krishna consciousness, not consciousness. Just like we don't say shine, we say sunshine. Pakrita Bhakta may fall down a sentimental devotee, but a Gani Bhakta does not fall down. And uh, so Prabhupada asks, who will carry? on this movement after you. Prabhupada said, my disciples who understand will carry it on. This whole thing is depending on surrender. You, if you are partially surrendered, then you will understand partially. And he who is fully surrendered will understand fully. One must be dear if you become disturbed sexually, etc., you cannot preach. Without being dira, one cannot detect the presence of the Paramatma. This dira is possible when you develop love for Krishna. Otherwise, it is not possible. You know, that, that just seems so true because, you know, like, initiation is so serious, you know? And it's like, really, it's not artificial self-control. It's that I don't want to displease Shiva Prabhupada. You know, we'll take that vow of Shiva Prabhupada from the evening in front of so many witnesses. But, you know, it's a sobering thought, dear, you know, a very sobering thought to think that, that if I fall down, then how can I bring myself to displease Shiva Prabhupada? You know, Prabhupada says this is a, the most personal religion. Every, everything's personal in this moment. Uh, everything we do, we're meditating on. I'm cooking for Krishna. I'm making flower garlands for Krishna. 
you know, and, and not only that, but with, wow, I was surrounded by other devotees, you know, and Krishna's watching how I treat and respect my God brothers, God sisters, and all the devotees, all the devotees, everyone, you know, it's so personal. But that's what we like, because we're, 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 we're persons. It, we, we like that. You know, we like being, we like being respected, we like respecting others, and just like yesterday, I was kind of lamenting because Mr. DeBay said, said, Jai Ho, Jai Ho, to pay it, you know, and I, he doesn't pay the, the know what he means, or John also, but, and then uh, he said, Jai Ho, he's always saying it to me, so I always say it back to him, you know, Jai Ho, and then he started saying something about uh, this or that, I guess I said something to glorify him or something. He says, no, no, but you're, you're the, He's, this is what he said. You're the great devotee, and I'm trying to understand his mindset. Oh, is that what he's thinking? Is that may have harbor some, you know, resentment? And what I should have said was, No, I'm your humble servant. Yeah, but that's what I thought about today. Yesterday I said something else, you know. He just took me by surprise when he said that, you know. So I wasn't ready for that, you know. But I wanted him to understand. No, I, I don't think that at all. I think I'm just your humble servant. You're the great devotee, you know. I'm just your humble servant, you know. But I thought about that today. So next time I see him, I guess I'll tell him that. <laughs> yeah. If you were hungry and I washed your coat, will that satisfy your appetite? No. Similarly, people are hungry. One cannot understand the Vedas without approaching a qualified Brahman or taking initiation or knowledge from a qualified Guru. Max Fuller's translation of Gita is useless. One step in Vedic life is to accept a Guru. It is not possible to write such literatures like Vyasadeva did, but even he accepted a Guru. Narayana told him that he was not happy because all the Literatures he had written so far only dealt with the body and the mind. So Vyasadeva heard from Narada Muni, Narada Muni heard from Brahma, and Brahma heard from Krishna. That is the process. We should receive the knowledge from the authorized Parampara system. Otherwise, it may be bogus. If you are actually eager and anxious to learn the transcendental science, then you must approach a guru. Just like if you buy a medical book and study it at home, does that mean that you will be accepted as a medical doctor? No, you must go to the medical college. You must hear from the experienced professor and then you can learn by practical experience, and in that way you can learn. By friendly talks, you cannot come to a conclusion. In a condition of perplexity, one must approach a bona fide guru. Sanatana and Lord Chaitanya. Lord Chaitanya said, quote, Do not hear from a person who is not a Vaishnava, because his words have no value. Just like in your country, South India, Dr. Radha Krishna, he has done so many works, but in one of his writings, he has said that the Bhagavad Gita is, is mental speculation. He has surpassed all the great acharyas, that's his mentality, who appeared in South India. Everything is very personal, just like Gavadakshai Vishnu enters each and every universe, and everything becomes manifest. Also the soul enters every body, and life becomes manifest. This modern chain at science will go on another 50 years only, and then it will be finished. So, fate was calculating last night, because it mentions here Nixon and the devil cartoon, and he knows like history, and he calculated back and he says, I think maybe there's one year left to go. <laughs> really? Well, I mean, that's Fitz, you know. That's his, his calculation. Office. I'm sorry? Who's in office? 
Yeah. Oh yeah, I, there may be one year left. Uh, and that's what we both were saying. Actually, we don't know if it'll even go one more year, even the way things are. I mean, well, the Democrats are saying we got like 12 more years if we don't pass the new Green Deal. So maybe we got 12 years if they're right. Who said this? Should we talk about it? Who said that? The, 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 the Democrats or the democracy? No, she's asking, I don't know. She's asking, Monolog, Monolog, she's asking yeah. that what your quote. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Is that from Prabhupada? Oh, no. I was talking about fit. We were talking last night. Was it was not the 50 year quote. Yeah, that's Prabhupada. Okay. The, uh, this, Prabhupada. this modern cheating science will go on another 50 years only, and then it will be finished. And then it mentions Nixon and the devil cartoon. But I don't know what that is. Hmm. Well, they don't respect, they, they, don't, uh, they don't agree with the Democrats and they, uh, that there's climate change. There is no, there's no such thing as climate change. To them. So I guess they've already rejected quote unquote modern science. And Prabhupada was asked, when you're gone, how will you uh, instruct us? Through the heart? And Prabhupada said, yes. If your heart is pure, everything depends on purity.
planned out the route since you know what your knee can handle. Oh, knees, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that would say straight through the through there mm -hmm. instead of deviating. Is the Bay seven. Street parking, is that the one that's on Broad? It's right off of, uh, what do you call it? You know, the one that has the, the, the big welcome center? That's what we did last time, uh, the, the Kaivalya. She, 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 she had her little... Um, it's Michael called North North something. The, we parked right on at the welcome center. Or, I think it's on Broad. And then we walked straight down, uh, maybe with Basin, straight down. But uh, she, uh, the welcome center? Well, isn't that our rampart? Rampart, what? yeah. Rampart, yeah. The, the, the double decker that, bus thing is right next to the double decker bus. Yeah, that big welcome center. And That's yeah. a far walk all the way to the uh, river, though. Yeah, well, you chant through the French Quarter that way. But I mean, I guess you can get closer. If you On want. Saturday, it's a little harder to park close to the water. Uh, but, you know. Where's, where is Basin and what's the other street that? Oh, parking Rampart. Parking? Oh, where you're talking where about? Where are you parking? talking about? Basin and what? Uh, I just tell people look on the internet, Basin Street Parking, and they always find it, you know, for directions. But if I'm an elite car, I could probably just follow the car, but we might lose each other anyway. We might lose each other, too. If we have too many people for the van, we, we think John is calculated, 12 people. But if there's you know, say like a lot of people want to come and that you're not expecting, you need more people. We got we need like a backup car too. I can drive. Okay, so there's the backup car. Is there seats in the van? There's there's seating for uh, eight, nine, ten, and then we could put like four lawn chairs in the very back. We figured out there's enough for four lawn chairs in the very back to sit for it. There's no air conditioning, of course. So I don't know. It's, I don't know. I don't, I don't remember riding it. You're not doing a very good job selling it. Huh? It's, it's driving. Yeah. Well, we wanted it. Hey. Um, gotcha. Mm -hmm. So is Kara going to come? Because Yoganda thinks she's no. like the best driver in the whole planet. Yeah, I wrote her, sure to drive. I wrote her yesterday. She said that if Princess Katya wants me to drive, I'll come. So she <laughs> has to come. She's Will coming. She, Will she be driving the white man? I think everybody will feel pretty safe if she drives away. So at the point of, of this hurry now, that I'm not I'm trying to say, you want to walk to some place where everybody can then sit and or stand in this, like a Well, maybe that was it. We used to, what we used to do. We used to well, walk in the summertime, straight. that makes sense. Yeah. In the summertime, it makes sense. But the last time we went, uh, and I think that was more like in the fall or something, and uh, we walked through the French Quarter, and after an hour and a half, I was toast. Sure. But but uh, Kaivali did a really good route. She, I mean, I, she we just cut across Bourbon, and then went up the Royal, and then around the, uh, Jackson Square, and then back up the others behind. You know, sort of this little semi street between Royal and um, what's the one we get to the sea, uh, the big one. Anyway, there's a little uh, charters. charters, yeah, between Royal and Charters, you, or even on Charters. But there's another street kind of in between. It's just half a, half a block, and she went back around, up, then back down Royal, and then went back, crossed back over Bird and straight back to the parking lot. And it took about an hour and a half, two hours. So there was a parking lot, right? The parking lot was at the far end, outside of the French. Was it $20? Because what I'm thinking I'm talking about is $5, and Saturday is 10 I can't remember the money, but it's a good uh, yeah. but it was um, it, you know, it was it's that big uh, welcome center, and it's you know I think it's on Broad Street. I, I think that's what no, it is. It's on Rampart. That's or, what? On Rampart or Washington? The police Something station. Like that. It's, it's, it's running. Park. It's running. Par it's running or parallel to Washington Charters. Park. Yeah, it's running parallel to, to all of the other streets. But it's not in the French Quarter. It's is it right off Rampart also? It's a long walk. It, we weren't actually walking, we were kind of like, like that. And, but it, yeah, well, we, we, we did it for an hour and a half, yeah, two hours. Because there's a parking lot on um, Charter Street that's real close to the cathedral. And it's just a small little parking lot. But 
it puts you right in the heart of it. But you know, I don't think the summertime. Just a little bit. It may be fifteen dollars. I don't think so, the summertime is going to be a problem about um, crowds. I don't, I don't think it's going to be. No. So you you know, otherwise I would say you should be leaving like at eight and get there at nine. But you know, I mean, because it's better at nine leaving it and getting there at ten. Because you know, if it's a small parking lot that you're talking about, but um. Well, we can do the basin one. So the, the, uh, yeah. so if you're not going, then the, the, what the plan should be is that look it up on the internet, get the exact physical address, and then have a GPS. Uh, how's your name, Are you considering your knee also? As long as I'm moving, I'm okay. What bothers my knee is standing or kneeling. Well, but I, I don't know. Well, I would say, you know, this like, what about like a folding chair, one of those long chairs or something? This, you know, when we get to the spot. I have one. It's like, um, you know, it's like one of those blue kind of uh, beach chairs or something. Is it heavy? No, uh, I don't think so. I don't remember. Colin bought it when we had to wait in line after Katrina. That's turning is we sit down hard down or what? Well, I mean, you do what I, but I think that's an that people problem. For the yeah, for the summertime, you know. So I'm, I think like you, I was in my mind, I was thinking you were going to be like parading down to a spot near the river. Then you have people like in a semicircle and some other people sitting. That way, um, it, it it satisfies both needs, and then turn around. We used to park. Back. We used to park down there uh, along the railroad tracks. Like, but what I've seen the police do is go down there and just pick out anybody they want to and just tickets. arbitrarily give them tickets. Yeah, yeah. Right. and I said, well, I'm not going to park here anymore. They'll put food on the car, too. You know, you've, you've seen it all. You've, you've, been, you've, you've been here since the beginning, you know. But, really? Uh, that's what I was... Are you going to 
I'm, you can join the sit down group. I mean, I'm, I'm seriously contemplating. I, yeah, I definitely uh, think that it's a real possibility. Can I ride an air conditioned vehicle? <laughs> what? Well, the yeah. heat really gives I can drive. Heat. I used to have a vehicle. It was air conditioned too. <laughs> Sounds like he's lamenting about something. Well, I, years ago, I, I used to have one. <laughs> yeah, but well, Krishna takes things away, you know. Krishna's mercy, you know. Everything's his mercy. Yeah, but you can't take it with you. Yeah. Can't take air conditioning with you. <laughs> But when you go to Vaikantha or go to Vrindavan, it's not too hot and it's not too cold, it only rains at night. So you can Yeah. Even the snow is not cold. All right. Yeah, yeah, last night it was 80 degrees in the middle of the night. You know what I mean? That's not unusual for around here in the summer, I guess, right? 80 degrees. How's your new place? Thank you. 